All right, it is part two of our lower third tutorial in Apple Motion. If you saw last week's video, you saw how I created these two different lower third looks in Apple Motion, and you heard me promise that I would show you how to publish them as Final Cut templates this video. So this is what we're doing today. If you missed that first video, I will link to it right here. So be sure that you don't miss that because I think it's helpful to see that video before you understand what we're doing here. Um, but what I've got pulled up here in Apple Motion is the first lower third that we created. So I can show you how to make this a Final Cut template. Now, let's talk about why you would want to make a Final Cut template out of a lower third. Typically, for me anyway, as a creative professional, as a video producer and editor, I have, let's say, a client where I'm working on a video that has several different speaking people in it, and I want to make um, them all have the same kind of look to their lower thirds, but obviously the text needs to be different for each one. Now I could create something in Apple motion and then for each one change the text, maybe change like the width of the banner, depending on how long their name or title is or other sort of refinements and then export it as a QuickTime movie with an alpha channel and then save those in a folder. And it, I can do that, but it's a lot of work. And those, those, uh, Apple ProRes 444 files that you you need to have that that alpha channel take up a lot of space. Whereas with a Final Cut template, I can save it in my generators files in Final Cut and then just modify the text and other elements in the banner for each individual person. So I create the banner once and then I modify it for, let's say, three or four or five people in the context of one video. It is a bit of a time saver if you know how to do it. I've got this name super here that we created in last week's video. Let me just play it for you to refresh your memory. So the first thing we want to do here is go up to file and select publish template. And then I'm going to select publish as a final cut generator. And it's going to ask me to sort of sort it so I know where it's going to live in Final Cut. So the first thing I need to do is give it a name. Um, I'm going to call this traditional super. Under category, I'm going to put it under name supers, which is a category I previously created. And under theme, I'm going to call it lower thirds. Now, if you hadn't yet created a category, you can go down here and create new category. So let's hit publish. So now let's hop on over to Final Cut and I'll show you what we're working with. Let's just first of all start a new project because I'm going to need to do that. You know, I use the term, just forgive me, I use the term super or name super um, often in place of the term lower thirds, which I know a lot of people use the term lower thirds. Uh, I come from a broadcasting background and we always just called them supers, but it really means superimposed. It means it's laying over uh, your live action video, let's say. So if you hear me say super, uh, just know that I mean lower third. So here we go. We've got our project with the super template test here. I'm going to click on over to my generators tab. We're going to scroll down here, name supers, and there it is traditional super. So let me drop this in my timeline so you can see what we're working with. And there it is just as expected. Now let's go on over to our inspector window up here and hit the generators tab, and there's nothing in there. Publish parameters, there's nothing published. We can go over to the text option and you do see that we have the normal text capabilities we expect to see. Now, if you wanna change this type, you actually have to click on it here in your canvas. So you can see this little white line that pops up around my text and I can select that and then look what happens. I get the text box you would expect to see and I can actually make modifications here. I can change the font. I can change the size and the alignment. I mean, I, I can do all the things. I can change the color. I can add a drop shadow. I can do all the different text uh, changes that you would expect to see. But what I can't do, if you look under the generators button here, is I cannot change the color or the scale um, of these rectangles or the design or anything else. And actually, with uh, Apple Motion, you can do that. Let me show you how we need to jump back into motion and I'm going to show you where the magic is. All right, so here is my project pane. And just to recap what we've got going in this 
project, I'm gonna like drop down all of these arrows for you so we can break down what's in all of these different groups that I created in last week's video. So the first and foremost is we have this rectangle here that's behind this like animating stripe pattern. This color solid is the gray that is in the background where these, let me just run my timeline. So we've got these lines going across. The color solid is the gray. All of these rectangles are all the different rectangles that are flying by us on the screen. So there's a lot of them. There's one, two, three, four, five. There's like 20 of them, all at different varying uh, widths, but all the same color and all going the same speed and the same direction. Then we have, here's the actual text. And we have this rectangle here. That's like our subtext that comes down with our creative director text. So basically what you wanna do is think about if you were in Final Cut and you were using this um, as a third party, let's say. So you didn't create this, this title, but you wanted to make some modifications for a very specific project. What in this project would you want, wish you could modify? So for me, I think about how sometimes people have really long titles. So for me, I think of this rectangle down here where it says creative director, and I wish I could maybe change the length of that rectangle to accommodate someone with a much longer title. Obviously changing the color of some of these elements is like definitely something you want to do as well. So what we have to do is go in to our project and find all those little things you wish you could adjust and turn on the capability for adjusting. Now, the other thing to think about, and the reason I chose this super to, to do this demonstration with is because we have all of these rectangles, right? In my mind, changing all of these rectangles in Final Cut would be like a total nightmare. So you really have to think strategically and be smart about what you're allowing yourself to change because it's all going to populate in your generator inspector in Final Cut. And if it's too much stuff, it's gonna be really hard to navigate. So we wanna be picky and choosy about what we would like to be able to customize. So let's first start with this main base rectangle here. So I think you should be able to change the color of this. So what I'm gonna do is go over to the fill color. I'm going to drop down on this arrow and I'm going to hit the publish button. And then just as a demonstration, because obviously we're not gonna stop there, but I wanna show you what happens in Final Cut when we do that. I'm gonna hit Apple S to save. We're gonna hop back on over to Final Cut. And here we are with our super here in our project timeline. And there's still nothing under published parameters. What you need to do is delete it and bring it back in in order to sort of refresh it. Now look, here's the fill color. Look at that, it already populated. And watch what happens. I can change the color on that rectangle, it's like really great, okay? So now that we've done that, let's see what else we can change and really be smart and, and strategic about it. So go back on over to motion. We're just gonna ping pong here today to show you. All right, so the other thing we might wanna modify is the length of this banner, right? Because if we had two people on the screen or we had someone with a really long name, um, we might wanna make this banner longer. So originally what we had done was in our main group, we had masked off all the elements in this primary banner here so that we could fade it out. Let me turn off that mask so you can see. So that's sort of what we're working with. So we might wanna change the position of that mask in order to reveal more of the banner so we can get more text on there. So let's select this rectangle mask in our timeline. And what we wanna be able to modify is the position. So I am going to drop down and publish that as well. Now let's focus our attention on this subtext here. We've got this little rectangle that kind of bounces down. Let's modify the shape here and let's make it so we can change the width. And let's make it so you can change the height. Let's make it so you can change the position. I think that might come in handy. 
and let's make it so you can change the color. Now I'm gonna hit Apple Save. We're gonna hop back on over to Final Cut. So I'm going to delete, of course, out of our project, bring in the refreshed one. So now you can see there's even more stuff populating in our published parameters. So here, this first one position, this is, okay, this is our mask. Great, that's working exactly as we expected to. Um, let's look at the width size. Okay, so this is the width of our subtext banner and the height. If someone had like so much text that you needed two lines, you could, you could change that. And we can modify the position of that as well. And of course, the color. So in my mind, these are the exact like features I would want to be able to change in this individual super. So let me show you what would happen if you like overdid it, what it would look like in Final Cut. This is just kind of like a cautionary tale. Let's head back on over to Apple Motion. And let's say we wanted to be able to change the color, let's say, of all of these rectangles. So I'm just gonna go publish. I'm gonna select all these rectangles. Okay, now I'm gonna hit Apple S to save that. Let's head back on over to Final Cut. And then look at all of the options you have here. It's just, it gets, actually this doesn't even look that bad, but it just gets overwhelming. So you have to think critically about how much you wanna publish in your generator. Let's head back over onto Apple Motion and I'm gonna show you how to undo all that. It's pretty much the opposite. So click your rectangle and hit unpublish. And you can just unpublish each one, one by one. So you guys, I hope this shed some light on how Motion and Final Cut work together. Do you feel like you learned something today? Let me know in the comments. This is definitely more advanced placement. And a lot of you guys have been asking me for like a paid Motion course. And I'm here to announce to you that I am working on it. Um, it's overwhelming though, because Motion, as you know, if you've been using it or just seeing my tutorials, it does so much. So I'm trying to just like start at the beginning and do this in a really organized way. So it's gonna take me a little time. If you're interested in that course, head on over to jenjager.com. You can sign up for my email list and you will be notified when it launches and we will probably be doing some pre-launch pricing. So if you wanna hop on that, that is definitely a way to do it. You guys, thank you so much for watching. I will see you again.